So getting into this climate nonsense and the, I think it's two S L G B T Q. There's two more letters and then it's a plus, um, topic. I can't even keep track anymore. Actually, I just received uh, an email from our school board and they, they had it all written out. And I thought, where did these two extra letters, when, and where did they come from? But anyway, um, we have uh, a video here of climate alarmist David Suzuki speaking at a rally in British Columbia about the old growth harvesting the logging industry. And um, it's funny because the, the clip is captured by, I think this is like a 15 year old kid. And he points out in there what Suzuki is saying and directly contrasts it with a certain flag that was present at the event. So maybe yeah. before we chat about that, let's show let's show you this clip let's show of it. David Suzuki yeah. being Good. radical. The thrust now. You go down to the corners in Vancouver now. There are signs. Recall EB. Have you seen that? This is a, the the it's a, a legacy of the truckers, the anti-vax movement, all of this stuff. Oh, yeah. And when you confront them, it's about freedom. Freedom without responsibility is not freedom. That's anarchy. <laughs> and that's a rejection of society. So understand, we have a relationship that gives us responsibilities. And the problem we face today is that we have in very recently come out uh, removed ourselves from a web of relationships to thinking we live in a pyramid where we're at the top and everything down below is for us. And even when you hear, you know, we have forgotten that we are one animal species. We live on the surface of the land. Oh, yeah. We know no, nothing about top. what's in the <laughs> oceans that cover 70% of the planet, and yet we've invaded over 85% of the oceans have already been invaded. We have taken over the land, which, which is our area of living. I, you just can't even keep up. So yeah, that clip comes from this, this young guy named Tyson Hockley. And I love that he points out that there is li quite literally an anarchist flag in the crowd <laughs> as Suzuki is like attempting to to group everyone who I guess wanted to uphold their own bodily autonomy um, as an anarchist. But David Suzuki really er, encapsulates, I should say, a rejection of societal norms. I mean, everything that he's doing is so radical. He like he threatened to to blow up pipelines. That yeah. sounds pretty much like anarchy to me um, and not very responsible either. But yeah, we're, we have um, Drea's article here, which I wanted to, I thought one um, paragraph in particular really hit it the nail on the head where she says, instead of forming illegal blockades, I think it's just down a little bit further. Um, yeah, there it is. Yeah, instead of is. forming illegal blockades and throwing manure at the premier's office like anti-old growth logging activists in British Columbia have done before. The activists behind the recall David EB campaign seek to use BC's existing recall legislation to get rid of NDP premier David EB's ability to sit in the legislative assembly by recalling his MLA seat. So this doesn't sound very anarchist like to me, it's the Sheila. Opposite. I don't know. <laughs> it's literally the right? opposite of anarchy is using the existing laws. And again, calling the truckers anarchists, that's insane. Because the point was the truckers didn't want no rules. They wanted the laws of the land respected. They wanted the Constitution, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms to be recognized again by a government that was yeah. disregarding them. And this is all part of these uh, extremist old growth logging protests taking place in B.C. Um, and they're blocking the roads there, right? Like they go out into the streets yeah. and they block the roads. And I'm reliably informed that that constitution constitutes a national security crisis. And I will tell you one thing I know about environmental activists, they don't have a lot of useful life skills, tangible life skills. And so I am of probably a very strong suspicion, and I'm probably definitely right, that they don't have the logistics skills that truckers have to keep a lane of traffic open for emergency services vehicles. 
which is indeed what the truckers did. And I definitely, definitely think that people who ride a bike for a living, uh, they are not able to recognize how to keep, you know, lanes of traffic open. But, you know, listening to David Suzuki, and I don't know if you know, but I did write a best-selling book about David Suzuki called The Unauthorized Biography of David Suzuki. And I did it to ruin his special day because he was getting um, an honorary degree from the University of Alberta, a university that is supported by the oil and gas industry and who graduates a lot of people in the technical engineering fields who go on to work in oil and gas. and he was getting an honorary degree from the university. And I thought, you know what, let's ruin it. Let's tell everybody all the things we know about him that will not be reported by the CBC because frankly, he's a creation of the CBC. And Mm -hmm. uh, because he's a fruit fly geneticist, he's not an environmentalist by any means. But one of the reoccurring themes from him is that, okay, he's anti-immigration. He basically says Canada's full. Um, I think his parents were first generation Canadians because he was in a Japanese internment camp as a child. Um, so this is a guy who should know what xenophobic sentiment can bring um, to new Canadians. He calls in his speech there, he called people invaders. He said, we're just another animal, which is like, I'm not just another animal friend. I'm the top of the food chain. Um, <laughs> uh, and you know, this is his outlook on people. And he's always been a hypocrite. That's why it doesn't surprise me that while he's calling other people anarchists, there's an anarchist flag behind him. He's also said that like, he's a depopulationist. He said there are too many people on the face of the earth. The guy's got five kids. He also said that, um, you know, the, the oceans are rising. Um, but he owns beachfront property. One of his houses is literally on the beach. I'm like, mom, (laughs) You seem to think it's a good investment to live on the beach. So the oceans can't be rising that quickly. And he says, you know, like we have to get rid of fossil fuel commuting. He owns a house or an apartment. I think it is when I pulled the property records in Australia. I think it's a condo in Australia. So his commute to his property in Australia is an actual circumnavigation of the globe. (laughs) <laughs> but me driving to town the half an hour to get milk, I'm the real problem. So, I mean, he's just uh, among other problems with um, some of his like insisting on um, an all female security detail when he speaks on university campuses, which is completely weird. Uh, he's just a hypocrite, but the mainstream media just glosses right over it because, oh, look, it's David Suzuki. And when he's really just a crazy old man. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion. And it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.